Voice in the Wilderness Internet Radio. Enlightening the world every week. It's not just knowing about the doctrine in the Bible. That is not what we stand for here. Streaming powerful biblically based messages live and down the internet. This congregation may never be gathered together again as we see it. Voice in the Wilderness Internet Radio. Enlightening the world every week. Good evening. Welcome to Voice in the Wilderness Internet Radio. We are streaming live down the internet from London. This show is dedicated to God through our Lord Jesus Christ. On tonight's show, we will discuss the question, Who is Lucifer? We will be studying the Bible and hearing two testimonies. Our guest speaker is based in High Wycombe, England. More about our guest after we have had some music. Send I you to labor unrewarded, to serve unpaid, unloved, unsought, unknown, to bear rebuke, to suffer scorn and scoffy. So send I you to toil for me alone. So send I you to loneliness and longing with heart a hungering for the loved and known, forsaking home and a kindred friend and a dear one. So send I you to know my love alone. So send I you to hearts made hard by hatred, to eyes made blind because they will not see, to spend the wheat, be blood to spend and spare not. So send I you to taste of a Calvary. As the Father hath sent me, so Who is Lucifer? We will be discussing this question tonight with Brother George Kabambui. Have a pen and paper ready to write down some notes. And so let's now call him and see if he's available. Hello, good evening, Brother George. 
Good evening, Brother John. How are you? Yes, I'm very well, thank you. You're live on Voice in the Wilderness Internet Radio. Tonight, we'll be discussing these questions together, Brother George, relating to Lucifer. Who does the Bible say Lucifer is? What did Lucifer do in order to have his name changed? What plans has Lucifer got for the human race? How did Jesus defeat him when he was upon this earth? And can we defeat Lucifer today? So, Brother George, as we discuss these questions tonight, shall we start? Would you like to start with a word of prayer, please? Let's pray. Our Father, we come before thee this uh, wonderful evening. We're thanking you for the day you've given us. We're thanking you for health. We're thanking you for life and strength. And now as we open the pages of your word, we ask for your presence. In your wonderful name we pray. Amen. Amen. So, Brother George, starting off, um, as we have this show tonight and as we share this discussion together, who does the Bible say Lucifer is? Thank you very much, Brother John. Um, it's very interesting. Before I just answer that question, um, I want to thank all those um, members of the public who responded to um, the, the the survey that was asked on this question. Yes. Um, a couple of people responded. Um, one of them said, um, uh, apparently, Lucifer is a fallen angel. Um, then she goes on to say he ranks, um, he had ranks of an angel. And then somebody also said he rebelled against God and right. evil comes from him. Um, and another person was very interesting. He said, um, I don't know who Lucifer is. I've never met him. And then he goes on to say, if I met him, then I will know who he is. And then finally he says, it's not someone I often think about. So you got all these different, um, answers that have come from the people. So I want to thank um, the people who have responded. And to tonight, we're just going to go uh, a bit further, you know, expounding some of those qu- answers that have been given. Now, <clears throat> who does the Bible say Lucifer is? Well, the word Lucifer appears only once in the Bible. And we find that in Isaiah chapter 14, verse 12. And that's right. in the Old Testament. Um, and I think... Um, uh, if you could just write down these uh, verses, then you can look at them at your, um, at your own leisure. Um, so that's where Lucifer is first mentioned. So um, that verse actually says, we'll go into it later on. But the verse says here, um, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? So this right. is where we find Lucifer um, in, in the scriptures. Right. Now, Now, Lucifer... Um, was the name of Satan before the fall. So before um, before he became Satan, he was called Lucifer. So so the fact that uh, Lucifer is mentioned once in the Bible, it doesn't mean that say, he's not mentioned again. He is mentioned, but this time he has another name called Satan. Okay, so so that's quite important for people to know. And how can we prove that from the Bible? How can we prove okay. that? Yes, okay, fine. So again, so the first um, verse which we just read, Isaiah chapter 14, verse 12. And we're going to go on later on where we go to Ezekiel. So we come to the verse uh, shortly. Right. So uh, so, so the word Lucifer, and, and some people have looked onto it as well, um, it has two two words coming together um, to give meaning to this word, as in Lucius, which means light, and fair, which means bring. So when you bring these two words together, um, Lucifer is called the light bearer or uh, the morning star, or sometimes the shining one, um, mm-hmm. and so 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 Lucifer, as the Bible says, is called a cherub. Somebody mentioned it earlier on, and we're going to read that in Ezekiel chapter twenty-eight, verse twelve to fourteen. I don't know if you have that uh, verse, Brother John, or I can find it. Okay, Ezekiel chapter twenty-eight. Yes, can you find it, please? And if you can, and I'll, okay, I'll join okay. you together. Ezekiel right, twenty-eight, um, and verse. Um, 12 to 14, and let's let the Bible uh, speak for itself. Now, in right. Ezekiel chapter 28, uh, God is speaking about uh, about Lucifer, um, um, but he's speaking to Luc- about Lucifer, um, you know, uh, the power behind a certain king called Tyre, but behind that Tyre was Satan himself, Lucifer. So God is addressing this king, but behind this king is addressing Lucifer, and we will see as the Bible goes on. So it says, yes, son of man, Take up a lamentation against the king of Tyre and say unto him, Thus says the Lord God, 
thou sealest up the sum full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. So automatically we begin to see this is not just talking about a physical person, but somebody much more than that. And then he says in verse 13, thou has been in Eden, the garden of God. And he says here, every precious stone was upon thy covering. And verse 13 mentions lots of precious stones, which were part of Lucifer's makeup. Right. And then he goes on to say, thy tablets and thy pipes were prepared in thee the day that was created. So automatically we now understand that Lucifer was created. So there was a time when Lucifer did not exist. Lucifer is an angel. He is a created being. So the Bible is very clear here. And then in verse 14, um, right. he says, thou art the anointed cherub which covereth. Right. Now, as you read the Bible, uh, you discover, um, and maybe something that we can be looked in, into later on, angels have different, um, there are different angels and, you know, different orders of angels. Sometimes they're called, um, you've got these cherubims, you've got seraphim, so different orders. Yes. So Lifa Lucifer was called a covering cherub, meaning yes. that he was the one who sat close to God himself. Yes. So okay. he was one of the highest angels. So the Bible is very clear. So it says here, thou art the anointed cherub, that covereth, I have said this so upon the holy mountain of God, thou has walked up and down in the means of the stones of fire. So right. here we see a description of Satan. So the Bible is very clear. Yeah, so just as, so, um, yeah, yes, if on. you don't mind, Brother Joel, yes, because um, just to reiterate this point that you've mentioned here, verse 14, because verse 12 is talking about the Son of Man, and so it's talking about the King of Tyrus, and then verse 14 explains that thou art the anointed cherub. So we can see that in context, the Bible is talking about a cherub, which is an angel. I just wanted to stress that point for the listeners so that there's no misunderstanding about who the Bible is speaking about. You see? Yeah, that's yes, that's true. Yeah, and, so and, carry and on, Brother right. George. Yes, and you're right, exactly. So we, we begin to see that, um, um, you know, there is no person who has all these different stones which were made um, there is no person who has walked in the Garden of Eden uh, who, who Isaiah will be talking about at that particular time. The king of Tyre would not have done that. So definitely he's talking about a power behind um, yes, um, behind right. the king of Tyre. So, so now we find out in the Bible that Lucifer was clothed with wisdom, glory, and beauty above all the other angels. Um, his form was noble, as we can read. He was perfect, the Bible says. He was majestic. Uh, it describes the precious stones, and it talks about the pipes, the tablets, you know, an illusion to his voice. So he was perfect the day he was created. So again, what's important before we go to question number two is that um, Lucifer was the name of Satan before he became the fallen angel, because he did fall. You know, because the Bible says that was perfect until iniquity was found in this. So that's the answer to who the Bible says Lucifer is. Right. Okay. Now, what did Lucifer do in order to have his name changed? Uh, that, that's very interesting because now, uh, obviously, as we said before, um, Lucifer then appears many times throughout the Bible and is called Satan. Um, it's called the devil. Um, so, um, you know, so, so therefore, what happened, you know, for his name to be changed? And for that, we go to Isaiah chapter 12, which also describes um, um, right. uh, uh, well, what happened. Because for, for, for our listeners, it's very important for us to understand that it is not true that God created the devil. Right. God created a beautiful angel, and the angel made the devil of himself. So that's very, very important because people assume that God you know, made the devil and he set him loose. No, God created the perfect angel, a perfect creature, a being. Okay, but sin was found in him and he made the devil of himself. So that's very important for us to understand. Now, let us go back and see what happened, you know, for for for, for his name to be changed. Right. So in Isaiah chapter 14, verse 12 to verse 15, um, it then tells us exactly what happened. And this is um, um, 14 is the verse we read earlier on, but uh, verse 12 is the verse we read earlier on, but I'm going to go a bit further. Right. Again, it says, 
how art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? So again, the Bible is very clear. He is fallen. What happened is yes. the question. Okay. Um, how art thou cut down to the ground, you who weaken the nation? And then he gives us the reason. Verse 13, for thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also on the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. Right. This is, is what happened. A desire for self-exaltation. He sought honor that is due to God. A creature wanting honor. So he sought greater glory for himself. And, and, and he wants, he has several, he's got a list of things that he wanted. And it's very interesting that all of them begin with I. It's about me, me, myself, and I. I want to do this. I want to um, ascend in, into heaven and exalt my throne. I want to do this. So he wants to sit on the throne of God. Right. So yet the Bible is saying he is a created being. You know, um, Brother John, yes. and sometimes in, in the world today, we have what is called abdication. Abdication, basically when a king renounces one's throne, Okay, so a monarchy renounces his throne and in favor of their son. So it does happen around the world. Yeah, so I... But God wasn't abdicating at all. You know, even the thought of it, even if, if it was the case, but you can't even think of that, but the person who would take the throne would be Christ. But here is a creature that is created. Yes. And he says, I want to sit also on the throne and it is a creature so therefore how can a creature sit on the throne and the king is there so this is is how uh, how how sin you know uh you know um um destroys somebody's perception and lucifer wanted to be like the most high and that's why he was cast down and his name was changed from lucifer to satan or the devil right so in essence um brother george lucifer wanted to take the place of god Yes, can can we yes. agree with that? In essence, that he yeah. wanted to sit on the throne of God instead of God. He wanted to usurp him as the rightful yes. ru ruler, sorry, of the universe. Now, yes, the Bible's clear, isn't it, on that? So there's we can be in no doubt if we read the Bible, as it says in verse fourteen, "I will ascend above the heights of the cloud. I will be like the Most High," and so. Um, well, what can we say, really, that um, the Bible speaks for itself? Now, Brother George, I'd just like to, pray, to play for the listeners two testimonies, because some people still don't believe that Lucifer is a true being. And I'd just like to play back two testimonies um, given by two individuals this evening so that the listeners can hear from others about this being called Lucifer. And... Um, we can take it from there. So, Brother George, um, I'll just play the testimonies and I'll be back to you. So hold, hold the line, please. Listeners, listen to this. Now, the first recording is taken from a meeting called The Origin and History of the Aquarian Conspiracy. This meeting was presented in Australia in 1986 by someone called James Arbito. He was an artist, photographer, and a lay evangelist of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. This is the first testimony that we will give tonight to prove that there are people who worship Satan as Lucifer and that worship Lucifer. There was a small university, a small college there that I visited in Ojai. And as I walked in, the woman behind the desk said she had three PhDs, religion and comparative religion and so on, philosophy. And so we talked for a little bit, and I tried to explain the difference between what I understood Christianity to be and what she was saying it was. Finally, she admitted, she says, I was raised a Roman Catholic. And she said, and she was an Eastern woman, she was an Indian woman. And she says, Christianity is a bloody religion. Look at the years of terrible persecution that Christianity has forced upon the world. That wasn't Christianity, friends. 
And I tried to tell her that. That was actually a manifestation of the occult under the name of Christ, just as this. We've never seen, we haven't in the modern age seen so much horror and persecution as we did under Hitler, which was a theosophist and a member of the New Age teachings. What she's talking about is a lie, a lie of the devil. True Christianity teaches that you never force any man to believe anything, but you invite him to come to Christ freely of his own will, and that you never hurt a living soul. Whether you do it in their heart or their body, you never hurt anybody. But she was totally confused. And I said, look it. I said, when Lucifer fell from heaven, and that's the last word I got out of my mouth, she fairly screamed at me and slammed her hand on the desk, and she said, Lucifer never fell. Lucifer never fell. And then it all was so clear. She was a worshiper of Lucifer. And it becomes obvious that that name in the Bible of that angel is the one that she worshipped. And not just a force, friends. She was a devil worshiper. And she could not stand the thought that the God that she worshipped ever fell from his lofty position. But when I went into their meditation room, this was in the wall on the stage. The same symbol that's on the American dollar bill. The symbol that Weishaupt designed so many years before, two centuries ago. That symbol represents the Illuminati and the plan to force the entire world into the worship of Lucifer at the end of time. Now listen to this second testimony given by Roger Monod. It's taken from part one of his video interview called A Trip into the Supernatural. Roger Monod escaped from spiritualism and became a Seventh-day Adventist. This presentation was released on VHS in 1995 by the Heart Research Center in California. Uh, and uh, as we talk, uh, uh, the band leader says, how long have you fellas been involved with sorcery? He says, I want power. I go right to the source of power. And he says, how do you think that I became famous the way that I am? And I said, you must have had some good luck. Well, he says, there's no such thing as good luck. He says, there's either some power working for you somewhere, or you don't get ahead in this world. Not in my, my type of occupation. So um, it, it went from there. We, went, we got talking about uh, spirit worship. Did it intrigue you? Or did it make you want to find out more about what exactly he was talking about? Yeah. So he said the, the supposed spirits of the dead that you're talking with are demon spirits. They're fallen angels. They're beautiful beings. Just set it out, just like Oh, that. yeah. It didn't make you uneasy when he said they were well, just Well, it shocked you a little bit, you know. Something that you first hear uh, uh, mentioned to you. He said, uh, you guys have got a great future ahead of you. Because we've been told, the high priest of our society, secret society, has been told that the master has very special plans for you too. Now, what did he mean by the master? Uh, Satan. And uh, we were interested to hear more about it. And he told us, he says, look, we worship spirits. We worship Lucifer, the, Lucifer and all his angels. They're just as beautiful as they did they, before they were cast out of heaven. He says there was a misunderstanding in the whole thing, he says, in the, among the inhabitants of the galaxies. And he says our master was misunderstood, and God did not bear with him like he does with, with people that make mistakes today. So we're in a warfare, good against evil. And we happen to be the evil ones, but we're not that bad. He says, I look at this business between the forces of good and evil. He says, you believe in, in uh, one person believes in God, and everyone believes in Lucifer. It's like politics. So, Brother George and listeners, yes. and so we can see that people have testified what we've just read in the Bible, that what we've just read in the Bible, I should say, is true, that Lucifer did indeed fall from heaven and is actually worshipped by people on this earth you know and all of this shows that the bible testimony is true that he has sought ever since his rebellion in heaven to be worshipped by human beings and this is not a joke this is reality it's no comic book story 
it's no fake news. This is the reality of it, that we are in a scenario where there's a creature that's seeking the worship that's due to the creator. So, Brother George, moving on now. Yep, um, I think I just wanted to add one or two more things yes, on that. Um, yes, sure. And then effort as well. Um, some time ago, um, there was an American psychiatrist called M. Scott Peck. Um, he's a famous psychiatrist. Um, he saw lots and lots of patients that he saw. And then he, in, in, in one of his books called The People of the Lie, he describes a group of people yes. whom he described as evil. He says these people were the most difficult to deal with. He describes these people who are on their way to becoming evil and those who have already crossed the line and are irretrievably evil. So Peck, like a psychiatrist, right. believed initially with 99% of psychiatrists that the devil does not exist. Right. Obviously, once again, this is a mental issue. The devil does not exist. But after being referred to several cases of possession, okay, yes. he was converted into the belief that Satan does exist. Yes. So, 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 so if we do not know what is out there, we're simply going to give a, a, a treatment to something that does not work because it's almost like putting a plaster on a gunshot wound. You are treating a spiritual issue with physical means. You are treating a spiritual issue with medication, with counseling. Yes. So therefore, it is the wrong cure. And, and and whatever you do, the devil just laughs at us because why? Because we are using something that is that is physical for a spiritual condition. So the Bible is very clear. People are get to understand that the devil does exist. And and, and the Bible is, is very clear. It says that. Because of this, Satan was then cast down to this earth. And the Bible says uh, his angels were cast down with him. And you find this in Revelation chapter 12, um, um, verse 7. It says there was war in heaven, and Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. And the dragon was cast down with his angels to this earth. And then verse 12 says, uh, Therefore rejoice, O ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. War to the inhabitants of the earth and the sea. For the devil is come down having great wrath because his time is short. Yes. So behind the scenes of earthly affairs, good and evil angels are engaged in a cosmic context, you know, contest for do domination through the control of human minds. Yes. So we call this the great controversy. So at this present time, the invisible agents in this struggle, uh, they, are, they, they, they are invisible agents in this struggle, although real, you know, yeah, they, sometimes it appears in the physical world, but most of the times we cannot see it at all. Yes. So this controversy, the Bible says, will increase in intensity as we approach the end of the time. As angels, both good and evil, will be permitted to uh, you know, to work as they are working for on behalf of God, of God, and other ones working on behalf of Satan. Right. So. Unless our eyes are opened and our spiritual eyes are opened, we can never see this, you know, um, this war. And we just continue our lives as normal, thinking everything is okay. And we allude every every situation to some kind of cause, and we don't know the real cause. Yes. Now, this moves us on to us looking at the plans that Lucifer has got for the human race. So, Brother George, um, I was let you carry on and explain to us exactly what plans he has got for the human race. So the Bible is very clear and there are many uh, verses which tell us about the plans of, of the evil one. And uh, obviously after he deceived a third of the angels, um, the Bible talks about that um, um, in Genesis chapter three, he then deceived Adam and Eve again into disbelieving the word of God. Um, and then again in Genesis chapter 6, verse 1, it talks about how men began to multiply and how evil began to spread and there was okay. a violence on the earth. Right. Let's slow down so a bit, please. See. Yes, Robert George. Sorry? If you don't mind, let's slow down a bit, please, because, yes, um, let's take it point by point because there are some listeners that may not have read this Bible text before, you see. And so, um, yeah, so um, feel free to give one of the first references from, from the Bible texts. 
um, that yes, you, so uh, that Genesis chapter three. Yes. Um, it, it's a, it's a long chapter. Um, so if you read it, it may take us time. But I think so. Just read the whole chapter of Genesis chapter three. Um, that's the third chapter in the Bible. It will uh, give you exactly what happened when Satan was able to deceive Adam and Eve and how they fell. And then um, in, um, in Genesis chapter six, I can read verse one and verse five. Yes, please um, do. And then uh, it will it will it will um, tell us exactly what happened um, at the beginning of Earth's history and how Satan was able to uh, deceive men. So in Genesis chapter six, uh, the Bible says here, give me a second, um, chapter six verse one. And it came to pass right. uh, when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them. Okay, uh, and it says that um, verse five, verse five. Right. Um, and God saw the wickedness of men was great in the earth, and that every imagination of his thought of his heart was evil continually. And it repented the Lord that he had uh, made men on the earth, and it grieved him to his heart. Um, so, so therefore, right. it talks about how men was evil. So now we see sin now spreading, you know, like a cancer throughout the earth. So this is one of the works of the devil. To, to, to bring in deception, to bring right. in violence, to bring in hatred, to bring in strife, to bring in wars, and all those things to destroy the face and uh, face of the image of God on on, on humanity. Um, in in First Timothy, that's in the New Testament. Um, um, right. um, First Timothy, Second uh, Timothy, chapter three. It also talks about how the devil is going to work uh, in terms of what plans does Lucifer have for the human race. So it says in First Timothy chapter three, verse one to five. Um, again, to the listeners, just write those verses down, and you may read them at your own leisure. But I'll read verse one to verse five. Is it and First it says, Timothy or Second Timothy? Oh, sorry, Second Timothy chapter three, verse one to five. And it says here, "Know it also that in the last days perilous times shall come. Right, For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetousness, covetous." boasters, um, uh, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truth, truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent, I can't help myself, um, you know, why have you done this? I, I just did it, I can't help myself, incontinent, right. fierce, despises of those who are good, okay, Tra traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness by denying the power thereof. Yes. So this is a description of, of, of the works of the devil because the devil uses beings. He wants to take control of men's minds because this right. is what this great war is all about. So this is what the Bible says in the last days. And anybody who just reads these five verses knows exactly that indeed you are in the last days because the devil is going to do as much as he can because he knows his time is short. Yes, now, Brother George, if you don't mind, let's just pause here for a minute because, and you'll see the reason why it is that I believe we should, because looking at these verses, and I'm glad that you've shared this tonight with us, because when people are covetous, boast, proud, are blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, and all these traits, it must be understood that there is a satanic being that's behind these traits of character, that's moving upon people to be like this, you see? And so, because some people just believe that this is the way that they are, you see? And so um, I just thought that it would be good for us to realize this at the end of the day because evil comes from Satan. It doesn't come from God. And, yes. these, and these are his traits. So, um, you know, I just thought to, for us to just to ponder this thought, you know, and to realize that this is all part of the great controversy. So carry on, Brother George. I don't want to... Um, hinder the flow of your thought this evening. 
Yeah, and, and then thank you for, for highlighting those because um, uh, people think that the world is going to get better, um, um, but we know education does not change human beings. Um, there are many educated lawyers, accountants, engineers in prison. Um, um, education cannot reform the heart. Um, so this is a spiritual war. Right. Um, it can be cancelled, you know. So therefore, again, you are using the wrong type of tool to solve a problem. So therefore, this is a spiritual war. Yes. And unless mothers and fathers, brothers and sisters understand the nature of the enemy we are fighting against, then we're not going to win this war at all. So this is why this program is important so that we understand you know, the nature of the power we are contending. And yes. one of the tools that uh, Satan uses, again, is a, a spiritualism. Um, because, again, the understanding of what happens when somebody dies and he uses so many tools to try and deceive so many people. Um, yes. We don't have time, but you talk about necromancy, you know, talking with the dead, channeling seances, apparitions, spirit mediums, possessions, you know, astral projection. All those are the tools that Satan uses to 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 to, to deceive people. And 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 in Revelation chapter sixteen verse twelve, um, it's very interesting. What plans does Satan have for humanity? And he says yes. here in chapter uh, sixteen verse twelve, if you can find it, if I can find it quickly. Yes. Um, before you read that verse quickly, Brother George, just want to let the <laughs> listeners know that we will be covering spiritualism in a radio show later on down in the year. Okay. Great. So, okay. So, yeah, so carry on. Yes. He says here, yeah, um, and the sixth angel poured out his veil upon the river Euphrates, and the water thereof was dried to prepare the way for the kings of the east. And then he says, and I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon, out of the mouth of the beast, out of the mouth of the false prophets. Right. For they are spirits of devils working miracles, which go forth to the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them for the great battle of uh, God Almighty. And uh, verse um, verse sixteen it says, and he gathered them together unto a place in Hebrew it's called in Hebrew tongue Armageddon. So we can see exactly what the devil wants to do. So he's going to unite and marshal people together for this great final war. So so it's yes, very right. important for us to understand that because the devil is is seeking to control the minds of the, the, the minds of men. At one time in the book of Mark chapter five verse nine, uh, it talks about a single man who was possessed by a demon called Legion. And a Legion in Roman army had about three to 5,000 men. So this single man, you know, was possessed by, you know, 5,000 demons in himself. So it, 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 we need to understand, you know, the nature of the enemy we're fighting against. Yes, Again, in Mark right. chapter 9, he talks about a boy, you know, a boy. So Satan doesn't care whether you are a lady whether you are a boy, whether you, whatever it is, this boy in Mark chapter 9, verse 17, you know, was tormented by a demon, which the Bible says many times it threw him into the fire and also in the water to try and drown him and destroy him. So That's again, right. this is what Satan plans has, Satan's plans are for humanity to destroy, to deceive, to cause chaos, to cause disbelief so that God's word cannot be cannot be um, um be effective yes, but no, we know that George, god yes. is greater than him because satan right. indeed is a created being yes now time is moving on brother george and um you know i believe that there's one more bible text that we should look at tonight on what plans is lucifer got for the human race and that's revelation chapter 12 and verse 17 you see because i believe that this is a key verse that needs to be shared tonight with our viewers, because yeah. what plans has Lucifer yeah. got for the human race, and what does the Bible say? Revelation chapter twelve, verse seventeen. He's 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 out for a particular type of person. The Bible says, and what does it say here? Okay, it says, and the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of the seed, which keep the commandments of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ. Right. So you see, and as we know, this is symbolic language. So, and I believe this is important for us to just briefly look at and for our listeners to understand that the, dra the dragon's rough with the woman and he's went to make war with the remnant of a seed which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus. So 
He is after those who keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus more than anyone else. Those who are obedient to God. And um, we'll cover this another time, but I just thought that the listeners should look at this and to realize that there's the devil's after everyone on this planet, but particularly those who are obedient to God, you see. Now, yeah, yeah and, and that's a good verse, uh, Brother John, um, because um, uh, the Bible is very clear that in the last days there will be a group of people who will reflect yes. God's character, who will yes. keep his laws and will keep his commandments, because throughout, um, you know, the whole issue about the devil is that, you know, uh, when you look at the great controversy, and again, there's a book which I would like to recommend to people, it's called, it's called The Great Controversy. Again, it also gives a broader view of this picture. But again, could can men keep God's laws? And Satan has always been saying, no, men cannot keep God's laws. But God is saying, I will have people who will be faithful to me, who will keep all his commandments, not half, not a third, not nine, all ten of his commandments, and again, we'll have his testimony of Jesus Christ, the writings of the prophets. So again, the Bible is very clear that these people will exist in the last days, and Satan will be so angry at these people. Because again, if you remember, he, he, he read in Second uh, Timothy, he says that Satan will hate those despise those who are good. So the fact that these people exist, you know, will even make Satan angry. You know, sometimes. Um, you know, people just hate people just not because you've done evil, but just because you're good. Christ was hated not because he done evil, but because he does good. Because sometimes when you are good, you know, um, you know, um, you know, your character shines out, and people see how you know, you know, evil they are, or how uh, how they f- uh, fall short, and because of that, they hate you without a cause. So the devil right. is going to hate God's people in the last days yes, simply because so. they are able to reflect His character before he comes again. Right. Well, Brother George, you must move on now, because um, speaking all of this about Lucifer, now then, how did Jesus defeat him when he was upon this earth? Yes, <clears throat> that's quite important. Um, I mean, when Christ was here, um, 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 it's very interesting. One of the first encounters that um, Christ had with, 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 with Satan on this earth um, was what we find in um in um 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 after his baptism um yes. so we we find that uh, uh christ was when he was um you know baptized he came out of the water uh, after being baptized by john even though he did not have to be baptized um and then while he was while he was coming out of the water he went into the wilderness and in the wilderness satan was able to encounter him and um um and he gave Christ three temptations. Okay, um, if thou be the Son of God, turn these stones to bread. Okay, um, and then again, the second one was okay. you know you know in, um, throw yourself for, you know uh, you know right. from the from the highest Another peak George. of the temple. Yeah. So yes. if you don't mind, shall we go to the Bible text, please? Yes. Okay. Um, yeah. Yes. So Matthew chapter four, uh, verse one to eleven. Right. Matthew chapter four, verse one to eleven. I don't know if you want to read that for me. No. If you could read it, please, Brother George. Okay. Yes, and um, yes. Yeah. Uh, it says, yeah, "Then was Jesus led up into the uh, by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted forty days and forty nights, he was afterwards and hungered. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command these stones to be made red.' First point: If thou be the Son of God, right. just in chapter three, if you read." Uh, verse 16, um, uh, verse, uh, verse 16, he says here, um, uh, verse 17, he says, And lo, a voice from heaven came saying, Behold, this is my beloved son in whom I am all pleased. So Christ has just been baptized. The voice from heaven declared, This is my beloved son in whom I am all pleased. And the first temptation that Satan asks is, if thou be the son of God. Well, it's now testing Christ's identity. God has just spoken that you are my son, and the devil is now saying, are you indeed God's son? Right. So we see the temptation here. So command these stones to be turned into, into bread. Uh, and then Jesus answered, and he said, it is written, men shall not live by bread alone, 
and by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Okay, let's pause it there now, please, if you don't mind. Yeah, sorry, let's sorry. pause it there because um, okay, time is moving on. And um, so what did Jesus do? What method or, or what was the vehicle? What did he use to defeat Satan? What what example has he given us here? Yes, so throughout these three temptations, uh, Christ, it is when you read your Bible um, uh, to listeners, uh, when uh, Christ would answer, it is written. It is written. It is written. So he was able to use God's word to defeat the enemy. And that's very, very important. That's an example that Christ laid for us, that when we are to fight the enemy, we are not to use our own reasoning. We are not to use philosophy. We are not to use science. We are not to use men's imagination. We are only to use the word of God, because that's how we can defeat the enemy. Right. Now, Brother George, um, we're going to have a break here for some music and we'll be back after this. So hang tight. Speak to you in a bit. My heart can sing when I pause to remember A heartache here is but a stepping stone Along a trail that's winding always upwards This troubled world is not my final home but until then my heart will go on singing until then with the joy i'll carry on until the day my eyes behold that city until the day God calls me home The things of earth They will dim and lose their value When we recall Their borrowed for a while and the things of earth that caused our hearts to tremble remembered then they will only bring a smile but until then our hearts must go on singing until then with a joy, let's carry on until the day when our eyes behold that city. Until the day God calls us home, but until then, our hearts must go. Until then, with a joy, let's carry on Until the day when our eyes behold King Jesus Until the day God calls us home
Brother George, final thoughts yeah, for us this evening. Great, thank you. <clears throat> so, um, uh, we go to, did you say question five, yeah? That's final thoughts for this evening. Oh, final thoughts for this evening. Yes, oh, yes, please, thank yes. you so much. Yeah, yes. So, um, I, I think um, what's important is that um, the way that Christ um, defeated um, the devil while on this earth is an example for us here today. We too can defeat Lucifer, the devil, today. And the two verses um, I just want to look at um, as we sort of round off, and then um, I may give you one or two more. In 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11, it says, um, Lest Satan should get an advantage over us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. And Ephesians chapter 5, verse 11, it says, Have no fellowship with the works of darkness, right. but rather expose them. There is nothing that Satan fears most than being exposed. And today, many deny his existence and is happy when he's portrayed like a half being, half creature with a, with a, with a tail and with a fork, um, you know, painted red as a, a figment of man's imagination. Okay. And when he's painted thus, people then say, well, uh, he's portrayed as thus. People say, well, can such a creature exist? Well, the devil is, is just, uh, you know, nothing at all. He doesn't exist. Yeah. And when we do that, People become prey to him because how do you fight a war you can't see? How do you fight an enemy who you don't know exists? You know, at night, you know, if you go to sleep tonight, we, we lock our doors, we, we close our windows, we, we set our alarms, you know, to protect our, our, our loved ones and our property from physical men who will come and try right. to break in our homes. But I tell you, viewers, listeners, there is something far, far greater, greater forces, evil powers that cannot be locked out with doors and chains. So, so, so therefore, how can these powers be defeated? Again, it is through the word of God. Amen. And, and the Bible tells us in, in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 14, that there are specific weapons that we have to use because the devil is a spirit. So therefore, you can't use a gun, you can't use a bullet, you can't use a knife to fight him because he is a spiritual being. So therefore, what weapons can we use? The Bible tells us what we can use. Second Corinthians chapter 10, verse 14, it says, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, they are not flesh, but heavenly weapons, you know, for destroying strongholds of Satan. So therefore, we have to put on a specific type of armor that we have. And in the book of Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 and onwards, it tells us to put on the whole armor of God, you know, so that when we go to this war, we are prepared. And the whole armor of God is very important because it tells us what are the components of that armor that we have. Because in verse 12, that same chapter says, you know, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Okay, so again, it's not a physical war, but against principalities, against powers against rulers, against spiritual wickedness in the high places. So this is a vast army that we're fighting against. So therefore, what do we put on? The Bible says, number one, you put on a belt of truth, truth in God's word right. that we tie on ourselves as we go to fight this enemy. Right. So this belt is very important that as we go to war, our, 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 our clothes are, are tight and, and there's no disturbance as we fight. Right. Number two, the verse talks about a breastplate. You know, a breastplate covers the heart and the vital organs. Okay, so therefore the Bible talks about this breastplate of righteousness, which comes from God. So therefore we are putting on the armor. So again, it's not enough just to put on a third of the armor. The Bible says put on the whole armor. Okay, right. and then okay, it Brother says George? number three, yes. we need to put on some shoes. What are these shoes? It says shoes which are you ready to, pre you know, shoes we put on are the shoes which we are in eagerness and readiness to preach the gospel. So we're going with God's word as we go out to preach the gospel. That's how we win this war because oh, we have yes. to go to the kingdom of darkness okay. and be able to win using this, um, the, 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 the gospel of God. And number five, four, it says we have to have a shield and that shield is a shield of faith. And then number five, we have to have a helmet 
and the Bible says it's a helmet of salvation because the head needs special protection as being the most vital part, the seat of the will and intelligence. So this is why we have to do this because the head is very important that it has to be covered. So the Bible says we put on the helmet of salvation. Right. And verse 6 yes. says okay. we put on the sword, we get the sword of the spirit. Brother so George, the sword of uh, the spirit must, is um, what we need to have as yes. we go to wage this war. So this is the way for it. This is the, the, the armor that we have to put on as God's people. This is the only way we can defeat Lucifer. Anything else? The devil just laughs at us. So the Bible has given us the origin of Lucifer. Brother George, do, yes, thank you. Uh, um, his plans for humanity and how we can overcome him. Yes, sorry, Brother George, we must um, round off for this evening. Our time is gone. And um, if you could, if you could just pray now as we close, and um, let's thank the Lord for the discussion this evening. Let's pray. Our gracious Father, we come before thee this day. We want to thank you once again for your love and for your mercy and for this time you've given us. We want to thank you that the devil is a defeated fool, and Lord, that uh, you have given us everything that we require to win in this war. And we know the weakest of the weakest of Christians, if they stand in your grace, you know, the devil has no power over them. Therefore, we pray that we as a people and our listeners understand indeed the nature of the great controversy, that they understand the nature of the two contending forces which are fighting for control, that the, this war is being fought in the minds and the hearts of men, that the only way we can gain victory is through your word. So therefore, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the victory that you've given us. And we thank you for telling us what's going to happen in the future, because the Bible says the devil will be destroyed, will be destroyed in that lake of fire. So there's a time that is coming when evil will be no more, only righteousness and truth and love and mercy. Lord, we cannot wait for that time. Until then, keep us faithful, keep us strong, keep us reading your word. And let us understand that the war is real, but so is the victory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I'd like to thank you, Brother George, for the, attending the show tonight. And listeners, um, if you have any questions or if you'd like more information, please send an email to inquiries at wildernesspublications.org. Or you can send a text message to 07944062786. If you live in the United Kingdom, please contact us with your name and address, and we will send you a free tract called The Origin of Evil Angels. Those who are living outside the UK can request for an electronic version to be sent to them free. If you have the Android app for Voice in the Wilderness Internet Radio, go to the ebook section and find the title Bible Readings for the Home. At chapter 1 or 2, you will find the subject, Origin, History and Destiny of Satan. And this will give you more information about today's topic. Well, time has run out so quickly, but on next week's show, we will be discussing the question, what is sin? Well, that's it for tonight's show. Until next week, good night and God bless. Voice in the Wilderness, Internet Radio. Enlightening the world every week. It's not just knowing about the doctrine in the Bible. That is not what we stand for here. Streaming powerful, biblically-based messages live and down the internet. This congregation may never be gathered together again as we see it. Voice in the Wilderness, Internet Radio. Enlightening the world every week.